everybody, this is Terry Darty with the Mom's Choice Awards, and I'm here with Bruce Lansky of the award-winning book, Giggle Poetry Reading Lessons. Welcome to the studio! Terry, I'm, I'm happy to be in the studio, but I'm really happy because I'm meeting you for the first oh, time. Oh, thank you. I know we've done some other work together, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yep, we can. Before we went on the air, you were talking about, you know, how heartbreaking it is to see all of these kids who get to kindergarten and aren't ready for kindergarten. How do, where does Giggle Poetry help fix or close that gap, I guess is the question. Uh, actually, the numbers I've heard is that it's, it's, it could actually be 25 or 40 percent of kids who show wow. up on the first day of kindergarten and they're already behind. And it's really hard for kids to catch up. Um, this book is a remedial reading book. Now, if you think about remedial reading, if you think back to when you were in school, and I bet you were a good student, I was a pretty darn good student, but I would have felt really awful to be in a remedial reading class because those are, you know, the kids in they those classes are, are struggling. Yeah. And I can tell you that, a, bit, a little bit about remedial reading, uh, the kids in that class read robotically, so they don't read in an interesting expression, using expression, and they are stutter and halter, sort of. They're, they halt and they stop and they go. There's, there's no pace to it. And they feel off, they feel embarrassed to be in that situation. It's not that they're not necessarily, they may be of equal intelligence to anybody else. Yes. They may, their, their parents may not speak English in the home. They may basically have be dyslexic. There's a million reasons why you might be in that situation. And I, can, I met a woman at a, at a show called the International Reading Conference she said, Bruce, I would like to ask your permission for something I've already done. I said, well, I'll give it to you, whatever it is. It's fine with me. She said, well, I've made a remedial reading program out of your poems because all your poems were tested, and I know that the best readers in my class love your poems, and my poetry books are in your class, and those are the ones that people want. That's the ones my kids want to read. And she said, I thought what I'd do is offer them to create little... Uh, customize reading lessons for each of these poems and give them to my struggling readers and see what happened. And she said, you won't believe this, but the results are off the charts. I said, well, in that case, oh, that I'm, really, so happy. I'm really happy about being associated with that. And what can I do for you now that you've already done whatever it is you wanted to do? Yeah. She said, well, you could put it in a book because um, the results in my school, my school, her school, her name is Amy Buswell. Her results were so amazing that her school went up from to an A level, from a like a B or C level, and the results of the kids who were pre-tested went virtually doubled in one eight-week session. So that's like crazy. And what teachers talk about is words correct per minute slash per week, but they don't say the slash per week. So every week you're supposed to gain. The expected is you're supposed to gain 1.2 words per week. That's what you're supposed to gain. That's if you don't do anything special. You just go to school. Well, her kids gain 4.6 word, correct words wow, per, that's, that's per minute. Huge. It's huge. That was, that's amazing. But the most amazing thing is the, the ambitious goal for teachers with kids is to, is to get two. That's ambitious. So at normal... Expected is 1.2, ambitious is 2, and she was getting 4.6 more new words correct per minute. Now, it's crazy. When, when you were writing the poems, were you, did you have that sort of, could, you know, maybe a teacher could use this, or did you just write them to have fun with some poetry? Uh, I have a fun, I, have, I write poetry to be, uh, to be as funny and entertaining and engaging as possible. And I test every poem that I've ever written that's been published. Let's say 500 or 1,000 poems. So only, I only publish the ones that, I don't want to say are off the charts, but that get, let's say, an A or B plus rating, if you want to use it that way. Out of five, let's say a four or better. And basically, those are the ones that are in my books. And what she did was she sort of took the ones that her kids liked the best, and she's the one who selected them. And um, she selected them because 
some of the poems have dialogue in them, and some of the poems have um, onomatopoeia. I mean, different things that she thinks are interesting for kids to read. Mm -hmm. And she selected them. But what I did was, if I wanted to sort of take yep. this. This, this is a poem, I don't know if I can stand up and do this, but can I, I stand was, up? Okay. Absolutely, I was going to ask you okay. to read one of the poems. So here's a really simple poem. This is like the first poem in the book, and it's for kids in the first or second grade, really. And I have performance tips here. So I'm going to do the performance tips that I talk about here. And here is Amy's real reading lesson that is all, pa you know, that has um, activating background lines. knowledge. Yeah. It's like a real reading lesson. Let's just leave it that way. So teachers will see this and say, yep, I get it. I can do this stuff. But it has model reading, guided reading, independent reading, oral reading. And Amy activates the background knowledge by asking a question to ground the kid and make sure they get what this is about. Yep. And then she talks about um, vocabulary. So she covers all the stuff in here. But I make it fun by basically adding gestures and sound effects. Do you have a poem that you might use as an example to show how Amy's work was put together? Yes. Uh, this is a poem called A Brave Little Fellow Named Brian. And that's a clue if you want to guess what's coming. That's okay. pretty much, it's also the first line in the poem. Okay. But anyhow, it's a limerick. And I'm gonna perform it the way I would hope a child would using both sound effects and gestures. And I think you're gonna find out that it's a lot of fun. And you as the audience may even be able to guess what the words are that I'm gonna say. You're putting a lot of faith and in feel me. feel <laughs> free to join in. Here we go. Okay. okay. Just a cute little number. Okay. okay. A brave little fellow named Brian, Brian went for a ride on a lion. lion. When Brian got bit, bit the lion got hit. hit, so now it's the lion that's who's crying. That's You're a great. great this is what kids can do on the school bus when they're riding home. Okay. And like, I'll play the role of your teacher and you can be my student. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, good. So you're going to just, it's called My Teacher Sees Right Through Me and I see you. Okay. I see right through you. So why don't you just sort of start complaining? Okay. I didn't do my homework. My teacher asked me. Why? I answered him. Keep going. It's much too hard. He said. You didn't try. I told him my dog ate it. He said. You have no dog. I said I went out running. He said. You never jog. I told him I had chores to do. He said. You watched TV. I said I saw the doctor. He said. He said you were with me. My teacher sees right through my fibs, which makes me very sad. It's hard to fool your teacher when your teacher is your dad. Thank you so much. But if you can add sound effects and crazy uh, it's gestures sticks. and stuff, well, you're more worried about the gestures and the sound effects than you are about your awful reading or, or troubled reading. And suddenly, you've got a new thing to worry about, and it's actually so much fun. Oh. And people, you cracked up a few times. I did. And the I thing did. about it is, that's not the funniest poem I've ever written, but it illustrates the point that if you add some sound effects and some and some uh, gestures, you can make reading poetry fun. So here's the crazy thing. So the kid who was assigned that poem for in remedial reading says, "Wow, I'm gonna, I want to do this at home with my brother, my little brother. I want to do this for my parents. I want to do this on the school bus with my friend, best friend." So they're practicing this, these crazy things. There's one poem called uh, uh, Someone's Toes Are In My Nose. And I tell them to read it like this. Someone's toes are in my nose, whose ever could it be? So they're doing this really mad, crazy, zany stuff. And they don't know that they're learning something because they're practicing it. So this one quote is really cool. Well, that's not the quote. It's not even on here, so I can't read it. But it's a quote that the reason that Bruce, Lansky's, Bruce Lansky and Amy Buswell's 
uh, reading program is so effective, is so phenomenal, gets phenomenal results, is they make reading fun. That's what it's all about. And that is the deal. You're in the business of edit, uh, you, you review books, you yep. write about books, you interview authors, and the whole thing is you love the authors that actually reach, engage kids, and turn them into readers. And that's what we want. I'm that's so glad you stopped by. Thanks. Well, thank you. And for I need to practice my sound alikes. Obviously, I've yeah. got out of practice. You'll be fine. Just keep practicing. <laughs> Read keep this practicing. book and keep practicing. Keep practicing. Thank you. Absolutely.